Also breaking out the magic mirror giant arrow to pair with it. This is going to be interesting. Let's see what we can do here because the war is on the line. There goes all the invisibility. Launch the fireball into the core of the base. We are in for a treat today. Millicent MG, a golden ticket holder of the world championship. And Synchronic, the number one seed to the world championship. Two golden ticket holders going head to head here in the early stages of the Mulan Cup. They're going to be played on hard mode and hopefully they put out a good show for us today. So let's kick into it and good luck to both of the teams here. This is an elimination match. It's crazy because you don't expect the major big name teams to collide this early into the tournament. But that's the way it's played out here. And we'll see what happens. But over to the left side of the base there, the Queen shoots a giant arrow, spawns the healers on that left flank there. And Max from Millis MMG. By the way, you guys didn't know. You guys remember that uh, drama with uh, Max and uh, well, what was VL, uh, VM Legacy and is now STMN Esports? Well, Max, after he left the VM Legacy team, got recruited officially for Millicent MG, and now he is going to play with them in the World Championship. So I guess it all kind of worked out at the end there in a roundabout way there. But we uh, definitely like to see what he's up to here. And so far, this attack is moving quite smooth. The Queen able to get some extra support there from the King. As the King threw the spiky ball over the left there and took out that Inferno that could have potentially... Ended up uh, messing with the Queen's healers there, but he's got it under control here. The Queen will wall break in the top corner there. Get to the other Inferno up there, and everybody else is collapsing through the overgrowth. He's got the rage. He's got the freezes. He'll lock it all down. King's trying to get to the wall there. He's desperately trying to get the assist. Just get a little bit of piece of that town hall, but the RC steps in first. He will get the final strike, and he will get it down. It's a triple for Millicent MG to kick off the war. Very big news if you guys didn't see. There is some potential that we're going to have some changes to hard mode if you saw over on the main Clash of Clans Twitter channel. And so we don't know exactly what those changes are going to be yet, but I guess we'll stay tuned and find out. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We'll see what these pro players do once they have those changes. And also the balance changes as well, but we're going to see Simon come to the next attack here for Synchronic. Now we're going to see another Root Rider attack here. Now remember, they are playing on hard mode, so the attacks are a little bit more difficult. However, Root Riders are not banned in this one here. And I, I do think that we're going to... This might this might be the last and final days of Root Rider dominance. Maybe. I guess we'll find out there because the Root Riders have been nerfed multiple times since they've been released to the game. But on top of that, we're about to receive a nerf to Druids, Valkyries, and Super Barbarians. And when all of those are used together, that's when we see this meta just dominate the game. And so we'll probably see... A lot of these teams, as they get ready for the World Championship, have to adapt to try to learn to run different strategies because if they keep on leaning on this one, then it's going to make so that teams like Na'Vi, who have been doing a lot more fireball attacks, could definitely start to overtake a lot of those teams there and become the most dominant team in the meta because they have a little bit more versatility to go after the other attack strategies. And so that could impact how these teams end up facing off in the World Championship once they get there. But in the meantime, Simon makes quick work of the base here. It is a little bit slower than Max's 69 second three star, but still very, very fast here. Gets it done with these, and he will get the first triple for Synchronic. Ryhard in for the next attack for Millicent MG, and he's going to break out the dragons for this one. We're going to see the Queen running the giant arrow and the healer puppet. And you're going that we are not seeing the magic mirror. We've been seeing a handful of teams having great success with the magic mirror, and we're not seeing it here, which is maybe it's because they don't have it leveled up there. I, I don't know why they wouldn't be using it, right? It seems like it's completely broken. We've talked about it in the last couple of videos. But we're going to see the Slammer making his way across the very bottom core of the base. There are a couple of balloons and a Dragon Rider pop out of there. And to the core of the base we go. We got a Mass Headhunter defensive CC. And so we all quickly power through that. Dragons handle that very, very easily. As long as they don't make it past the line of dragons and end up sniping off a hero. But the Queen is able to get a wall break over to the far right. And keep on walking that right flank there with the healers. And I guess that is one advantage of using the healer puppet instead. Is obviously like we've seen... For so long, the Queen, if she can just stay alive there, she doesn't have to invest extra troops outside of that. And that means more dragons into the core of the base. But across the backside of the base there, remember the King had the spiky ball, and he also had the Earthquake boots. And he's able to get the base open there, so he needs to get back into the area, get the Monolith down. And so far, looking pretty good there. Able to step in, and he will get the triple on the board here for Millicent MG. Another one. And a pretty fast one again. That attack was a minute and three seconds. So their average is a minute and six seconds. And now we'll see if Synchronic can match it, which is not, a, not an easy thing to do. 
to consistently get triples on hard mode and push for the perfect wars, but obviously you're dealing with two golden ticket holders to the world championship. So if anybody can pull it off here, it's these guys. But interesting choice here. We're going to see a giant arrow shoot across the bottom base there, and we're running Rage Gem on the board. And a Turtle Tome and Rage Gem is able to deliver the blimp there to go after the Town Hall. Looks like inside was Bloons. They are able to get the Poison Tower triggered, and all the dragons will circle around the poison. It is very, very convenient. Would have been nice if we got other traps in the area triggered there. So we've got a couple going off at the core of the base. But he'll rage up the bottom group of dragons. And the dragons are going to destroy the clan castle. Notice he's keeping the ground the ground troops, specifically the heroes, away from the clan castle until it's after it's destroyed. But he still needs to deal with the single Inferno here. The War Champion's head across there. She's got the Spirit Fox there. She should go invisible before it's able to go full beam. And she will walk her way through it. But he's still got a lot of base here. Dragons are starting to fade. And that is one of the downsides of running the rage gem over the other equipment and remember rage gem is going to not be affected for the high level town halls by the nerf and so he does get the triple on the board there pretty easily and the question that you're always going to have to now ask is after we get the healing tome and the eternal tome nerfs are we going to see more people especially in dragon attacks switch it over to rage gem which the nurse did not affect that let me pull up the nurse here so we can see exactly what i'm talking about so we see that the Rage Gem is only affected for the level 14 and below. So the max level is still going to deal the maximum damage. And then with the reductions of the other two pieces of Warden Equipment that people are normally running with the Dragons, we could absolutely see Rage Gem start to take over the Dragon meta. Let's rewatch that back here real quick as it did lock in and it looks like a minute and 13 seconds. Use Lightning into the core of the base to get the Sweeper the monolith and the poison tower but this giant arrow here didn't seem to hit much there like it went right through the dead space here and hit all these walls didn't seem to get a lot of value out of that giant arrow definitely could have aimed that differently but it's kind of hard to aim it when you're deploying when your buildings that you're next to are right on the edge of the base there and it does make it a little bit difficult but looks like this one used some lightning to wipe out the very top quadrant of the base Looks like that compartment had the monolith in it, but that area is getting filled in by the Teslas now as we make our way forward. Let's see the Queen. Queen was running Giant Arrow and the... Okay, that's that's the trick that we've been waiting to see. The... the What do you call it? <laughs> the Magic Mirror plus the Druids with the Giant Arrow is definitely something we've been talking about over the last couple wars here, where a lot of these pro players have been breaking out here. And I feel like as uh, anybody who has Magic Mirror Upgrade is going to be using it like that. So this is incredibly powerful. But into the bottom of the base we go. Bypassing the Overgrowth for now. We've got plenty of spells to support at the back end here. The Siege Barracks drops the Super Minions. They're able to get the Defense World Champion out of the way on the right side. And the Spiking Ball goes off a little bit early. Definitely would like to see that stay, or hold on to a little bit longer until he ends up having the Overgrowth wears off. But he's got plenty of troops right there. And because the Spiking Ball... Took out everything that wasn't inside of the overgrowth. He's able to quickly step in there with everybody else there. And he will get another one on the board here. It's a, it's a minute and 13 seconds. Millisieve MG is cruising through these bases. Here's that lightning that he used there. He shot the giant arrow through the inferno and through the monolith. And then combined it with a small amount of lightning. So using the giant arrow with the queen with the magic mirror does get a lot of value there but he didn't however put the druids down until much much later i feel like there's a lot of value to be putting the druids down the moment that the queen drops because then the clones fade the same time that the druids transform and then the druids step up and tank and if you delay the druids then you potentially put your queen in danger so may maybe you could have played that better but i guess at least he gets the queen to survive anyways because the druid heals her and then the peck is able to step out in front she did end up surviving to the end so I'm always keeping an eye on what kind of value these guys are able to get out of this magic mirror because it is obviously a very powerful piece of equipment. I think Synchronic would need to clock this one in at like a 50 second triple to actually take the lead in a single attack. So that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> It'd be like one second off of the world record if it did. So that would be nuts. But we can't expect that. So they need to keep it up as fast as they can. And they'll have to make up the time over the next three attacks. And we'll see what they can do here but over to the left side of the base here we're gonna immediately pop the queen and interesting i this is the first time i've seen anybody use the magic mirror with a healer pop it he did lose one of the healers immediately upon dropping it but 
is that more value yeah, i mean at least he gets into that area quickly and he can have the queen sustain later on just like you would with anytime you use the healer puppet but I, like i said i like the druids more i just think they keep the the clones up a little bit better as well and then you get the bears to tank but i mean i guess in the long term if you can keep the healers alive then they could ultimately get more value so i can see maris in both but you got the dragons moving across the top of the base there what kind of single inferno though that single inferno is going to potentially slow him down pretty heavily in the core of the base there. And now we got Ice Golems to pull it out there, which is definitely not ideal. Definitely one of the ones that the Dragons say more central, but the Road Champion, I think, was in the area. And she got shut down, I think. I see the Spear Fox is down right there. And is that the defensive Road Champion? It was uh, either the defensive or the offensive Road Champion. And either way, it's gone, and so is his. And so this actually... This actually... is going to miss... This is a defense, but it's gonna end at an 86%. And Amir Khan is going to give Millicene MG a lead on something other than time. And now Syncretic is gonna have to find a big defense. Let's see where this funnel messed up here because the E-Dragon, the balloons were able to clear out of the very top corner of the base. And the dragons ideally would have gone directly forward and taken out the clan castle. We often see people use the blimp as a funneling tool there and he did clone it he invested heavily into it but by the time the blimp dropped all the dragons were already stacked on top of the town hall and you don't want that you want it to stay to the left side you want the town hall to be your funneling point so that all the dragons stay on the left side of it and get pushed directly into the core of the base but because so many of them had already turned up to the town hall that ultimately caused them to miss out on the core of the base and then the dragons were not able to get the clan castle down then the road champion pulled the clan castle obviously a lot of things went wrong there very very rapidly by the lack of the funnel on the right side caused by the town hall going down too slow and i'm not really sure what he could have done to fix that other than maybe just put the dragons heavier to the left just a little bit further deployed left there so that they stayed left longer and stayed away from the town hall until the blimp got it down that says the bar here for Millicent MMG. They need to keep any miss, if they do have one, above an 86%. So we're going to see another dragon attack here. Let's see the hero equipment. We're going to see the giant gun and the rage vial. There is the giant arrow and the magic mirror. We're going to see how we use it. There we go. Giant arrow shoots across the base there, taking out two air defenses and sets up the dragons. But at the same time, the queen will move along the flank there with Druids to keep her up. And now, that new setup there, that new crazy overpowered Magic Mirror is going to set him off into the base here with the dragons. And we'll see how far he can push. But he's got a sweeper there and a sweeper there. And they're both facing away from the town hall. So he powers through the town hall, running the eternal tome and the healing tome to be able to protect himself from the blast and then heal through the poison. We also get through the clan castle with the same... The same equipment right there, be able to easily power through the headhunters, which means there's something heavy inside, and he's gonna end up pulling it with the king there. It also ends up splitting, so he's got ice golems head in both directions here. Her champion will intercept one of them. She's got the spear fox right there, but looks like she does get the inferno down there. She's got that. Watch out for that uh, expo there if it locks onto her, but looks like it is locking on now. A lot of defenses left here. This is not cooked yet. He's still got a long way to go. He's got to get through this defensive queen over the right side, and he does end up losing that fight. A couple super hard barriers step in there trying to get the assist, and he will lose that fight as well. Defensive queen is holding strong, and now he's got his road champion popping and building the core, and will try to get through with the rocket spear. Rocket spear and sinky shield already gone off here, but this raged up scatter shot doing a lot of work against her. The defensive queen could absolutely hold the line here, along with this multi archer tower. It is going to be a high enough percentage to keep him in the lead, but. We're going to have the lead sustained here on percentage for Millicent MG, but it's an opportunity now for Synchronic to tie up the stars. And then if they can find another defense, then the percentage could end up being irrelevant as they could potentially take it on stars now. Synchronic has been granted a golden opportunity. The only way to seize it is to get this done with the fireball. We got Einstein going in. And he's also breaking out the Magic Mirror Giant Arrow to pair with it. This is going to be interesting. Let's see what he can do here because the war is on the line. There goes all the invisibility. Launch the fireball into the core of the base. Flawless execution on that. But there's the Giant Arrow. And the Magic Mirror trick will take out the left side of the base there. Utilizing all the fancy equipment. But 
What do we got for the king? Spiky ball this is going to be deployed over to the far right side of the base there with looks like a freeze down immediately to get through the defensive road champion. We got the Siege Bricks collapse at the very top of the base there. Rocket Blue started to deploy there. The clones from the queen off of the magic mirror doing good work there with the Druids keeping her alive and kicking there. But watch the defensive queen. She does get locked on too. She does win the fight though. Is she down or is the close down? I can't tell. I think she went down. That could be a problem over the side there. That is a big problem if we can't get the town hall later on. But the spiky ball is... It uh, was already used there. That was the, I was like, what was that bouncing around there? It was the rocket spear. Rocket spear off of the world champion will reach the town hall without putting her into range of threat. And she will power through it. It is a clean, clean, very complicated triple here for Einstein, but when you got a name like Einstein, you expect genius and genius was witnessed. Okay, we need to break that down a little bit further here because that was absolute insanity. Five invisibilities to shoot this fireball out of the base, and that's how you set it up right there. I mean, he hit a lot. We gotta grab a screenshot of that. Einstein always going out there with the crazy, crazy attacks there. Always so satisfying to see these fireballs hit a very, very compact area, but he actually had a mistake right there because the earthquake did not clip the infernos and so they stay standing and then i guess the battle builder was able to repair at least one of them right another one maybe stayed weakened up there but that's a big mistake there that could ultimately cost him but i do like the the queen shooting the giant arrow across the top of the base there and did she hit an air defense she maybe could have got the air defense at the very top of the base there and taken some or given some relief to the rock of up there so they get a little bit more value but the Siege Breaks did such good work across the top of the base there. And then the King. Look at the King over the right side. Running Angry Jelly to be able to push in and get the Defensive Road Champion down. And then throw the Spiky Ball to clear out. Like, every single hero had an entire section of the base that they were in charge of. And when you combine it all together there and support it with Rocket Balloons, it did get the job done. And it will give Synchronic a chance. But to get that chance to actually mean something they gotta find a defense of this one so nachoa is in it looks like he shot a giant arrow through the middle of the base they're hitting both of the sweepers dragons will move across the top of the base there. the queen will get a wall break in and the slammer will work on her flank there but she does have access to reach the air defense and the inferno and fight off the defensive king down south the king on offense is going to drop their angry jelly spiky ball and the water with the healing tome, the eternal tome will go to the core of the base. But because we use the slammer, we gotta get the dragons to secure the town hall takedown. But he's gonna skip it for now. Overgrowth is down. And now the world champion deploys on the far left there. Hog put in haste file. We'll push her across. King still working. Already popped his ability through the spiky ball across the bottom of the base there. So gotta get back to the town hall here though. Gonna have a lot of force still moving. World champion ability still attacked there. Two rage or two freezes. One rage. Looking good here. I think he's got it. I think we're gonna see a win here. For Mila CMMG, I can't see this missing at this point here. Not with as much force as he still has moving, but he'll freeze everything right there. Rage is world champion. Hog Puppet Ace file inside of the Rage will quickly work their way through that other freeze to make sure that they survive. And down south here, I guess the world champion is the first to go into the south buildings there, but the dragons are able to secure the all takedown, and it will be a triple and a win. Three buildings off of the perfect war as Mila CMMG, our, one of our newest golden ticket holders, to the world championship will end up taking the 14 star win over synchronic and we still have one more tactic so let's cheer on synchronic because they unfortunately one of these teams had to go down obviously but synchronic is looking to be eliminated here in the mulan cup general x will close it out here we have one more last ditch effort with the dragons and we get to see if we did end up seeing a miss from real cmg if this attack would have been enough to carry them to victory obviously they are eliminated now so We'll see what happens. But we got a blimp. We got a double clone. We could see uh, maybe a big Yeti bomb to drop into the middle of the base and wipe out a bunch. But that doesn't deal with the town hall. That's probably not going to be able to sail long enough to be able to get to the town hall. So it'll probably be open. There's a trap. Absolutely not going to get there. He will rage up, though. And it looks like out of it is going to be Yeti's double clone. Trying to get the clones to spawn over the wall. But I'm not seeing them on right there that's gonna be an issue there if they don't get into this other clone that's on the other side of the wall because they maybe get oh there we go yeti mites they're getting a little bit of clone okay yeti mites are getting cloned heavy yeti mites getting cloned all the way through and gets out that model which was a critical target a heavy spell investment to get it but the spiky ball bounces across the right side and will hit the town hall there as the king makes their approach obviously still a lot of base left here dragons will finish off the cc if they're ready troops inside of it they will go down with it and this one dragon has gone to the town hall there. That might be worth freezing and raging right there to make sure that goes down. But he 
<laughs> yeah, okay, he's just gonna rage quit. <laughs> I think he could have got the tunnel down. I think that might have been, still been able to triple there. I, I think, I think it would have if he burned the freeze and the rage out of that one single dragon to secure the tunnel takedown. But obviously he didn't think it was gonna get there. He rage quits. And they were going to lose anyway. So Mirlis MG will move on to the round of 32 in the European qualifiers for the Mulan Cup and will survive to fight another day. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you in our next video.